Hey Z Stars, what's good in the proverbial hood? It's your girl Zara, popularly known as FX Zara. If you've never been here before, welcome to my channel. If you have been here before, welcome back. I know there's a different aspect, but I mean, I look kind of cute today, so I thought I'd bring you guys in a little bit closer. Now, I'd like to talk to you all about seven tips that you've likely never heard before to grow your natural hair long very quickly now i don't want to waste your time because these tips are really valuable and each part of this video is really going to benefit you on your hair journey but before we get into the video please be sure to give this video one big thumbs up it lets youtube know that you enjoy this type of content and it really helps me out it encourages me to make fantastic content for you all please be sure to also comment down below let me know what tips you all have for growing healthy long hair Please be sure to also share this with your loved ones, your friends, your family, anybody who you feel can make use of this information and last but can never ever be least. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and turn your notifications on so you know every time I post a new video. With that being said, let's get right into this video. If you're not already, be sure to follow me on Instagram at fxzara, E-F-I-K-Z-A-R-A. I post a lot of my photography there and of course behind the scenes on how I get my iconic imagery. Be sure to also follow me on Twitter at fxzara so you can chat to me and ask me all the questions your heart desires. I try to answer my DMs as much as possible and any tweets I reply to, so that's the best place to reach me. So tip number one, you must eat properly. If you're not feeding your body the right nutrients, your hair will not grow well. You may still see growth even if you're not consuming the right nutrients, but if you are significantly malnourished, even just slightly malnourished, it will definitely show in the quality of your hair. This is because your body diverts nutrients to the most necessary organs when your body is not getting enough. One of the telltale signs of someone who is malnourished or undernourished is significant hair loss, poor quality of hair, poor quality of nails and skin. Personally, I notice the most hair growth when I eat an abundance and a variety of nutrient dense foods. So the foods I really enjoy consuming as somebody who is a vegetarian are beans, legumes, leafy green vegetables, cucumbers, tomatoes, onions, broccoli as a Nigerian girl, vegetable soups and stews, oats, other healthy starches and fibrous foods, and of course I drink plenty of water. Now within the past year and a half to two years, I've definitely been eating a larger volume of food. I've always had a pretty hefty appetite, but like I've seen a significant change in my hair for the better because I'm eating more frequently. I'm not limiting myself as far as my food consumption. And I mean, I'm balancing it with activity. So I'm eating a lot, yes, but I'm also remaining active so that a lot doesn't go to the wrong places, you feel me? <laughs> but of course I'm eating a large volume of really healthy foods. Now any nutrients my body doesn't need to sustain itself are going to go to my hair. This is why this is the number one tip on this list because a lot of people don't actually take care of their internal health when they're trying to grow their hair. But again, what people don't realize is that if you don't care for your internal health, essentially no matter what you do externally, your hair is not going to thrive and that's just the bottom line. So please take this very, very seriously. Tip number two. Now it's true that you don't actually need to trim your hair to grow it. However, if you don't start any hair growth journey with neat ends, your hair might not actually gain length. If your hair is not trimmed regularly, it will only continue to split up the shaft and cause significant breakage. This is why it's important if you want to start afresh to start by trimming your hair. Now this might be one millimeter for some people and several inches for some other people. Your hair will essentially tell you what needs to be done, but don't shy away, actually listen to it. You will thank yourself very well later on down the line if you do the needful and cut off hair that is simply not healthy, trust and believe. Your hair will also let you know how often you need to be trimming it because it will show you how much wear and tear you have over a period of time. Now, if you're not necessarily familiar with your hair, take the time to monitor your hair and learn how it behaves. That way, when it's time for a trim, you know and you don't go over that time frame or under because of course, trimming hair unnecessarily 
necessarily is going to also stunt growth. As per a hair whisperer, I'm very in tune with my hair and I know what it likes. I actually trim my hair extremely frequently, <laughs> like literally like once or twice a month, but I do micro trims. I call them micro trims because I literally trim off less than a millimeter every time I trim my hair. I do this because I have a huge issue with seeing ends that are not neat. It makes me physically uncomfortable and really to satisfy my itch, these micro trims are super beneficial. Not only that, but they've kept my ends extremely healthy and allowed my hair to be very consistent down the shaft but I'm still seeing a lot of growth. Now this may not work for everyone. I'm not telling y'all to go out and do this because this is not for everyone, but do find what works for you and for your hair, I urge you to. Tip number three, leave your hair alone. That's it. That's the entire tip. <laughs> no, on a serious note, stop touching your hair. Get your hands out of your hair. Leave your hair alone. Personally, I never wear my hair in an afro. I've worn it in an afro like maybe two or three times this year, I think. Maybe more, I don't know, I'd have to check. But I literally just leave it in twists or braids 99.9% .9 of the time and I put it in a ponytail or a bun or any other cute style that I can put it in. So I literally just try to give my hair room to thrive and flourish without my hands constantly disturbing it. Low manipulation is the name of any growth game. Whether you're doing wash and goes, twist out, protective styles, make sure that you're not manipulating your hair frequently, but also ensure that you're keeping your hair healthy, moisturized, clean, etc., etc., etc as you're not manipulating it frequently. So yeah, leave your hair alone, leave it alone, don't touch it, period. Number four, encourage blood flow to your scalp. Now I don't really hear a lot of people talk about this, but this is super important if you want your hair to thrive. Circulation is exceptionally important for ensuring that the nutrients in your blood are distributed all around your body evenly now how do you increase circulation to your scalp you can do this through exercise which i highly recommend because this allows you to be healthy all around now if you guys notice a lot of people that are on hair journeys those that exercise very very regularly tend to exhibit significantly more growth and retention than other naturals that's because the nutrients they're consuming are regularly bathing their hair follicles their hair follicles are rich scalp massages are also very beneficial for increasing blood flow to the scalp now if you combine exercise and scalp massages you're gonna be rapunzel like period <laughs> but on a serious note i like to combine both of these to grow my hair very well and the last thing i do to ensure that blood is bathing my hair follicles is to invert my scalp will invert my head. <laughs> I try to do it like every day because I mean, I'm quite tall. I'm six foot two. I tend to have issues with circulation. So to actually avoid these issues, to make sure that my body is healthy, I invert and I try to ensure that I exercise and massage my scalp so that blood is constantly flowing through my body. It's actually improved the quality of my life significantly. I know that sounds kind of dramatic, but the exercise in particular, if you're not used to exercise please find a way to get into it even if you're not doing scalp massages or inverting your head you will benefit massively from incorporating exercise not just for your hair but for your well-being as a whole tip number five use external nutrient-rich stimulants now a lot of people don't talk about this but I will because it's actually really important. There are things that can stimulate your scalp to produce more hair and healthier hair. Now those things include oils, rinses, and spritzes. And they can be essential oils, they can be carrier oils, but oils enriched with herbs, powders, seeds are more potent when it comes to stimulating the scalp. I'm a huge proponent of using oils on the scalp and on the hair, really. I have a whole video about my hair growth oil. I'm also going to link my hair grease for you all so that you can view how I make my stimulating scalp grease that is also medicated and heals my scalp of any type of ailment. <laughs> oils have massively changed the game for me and I've seen a huge amount of 
grove whilst using oils and spritzes as well as rinses now typically what i do is i spritz my hair with one of my spritzes from my recipe bible which i will link for you all it's a great book that allows you to make really potent hair products in the safety and comfort of your home. I use all the recipes from my recipe Bible and they've allowed my hair and my scalp to thrive. Now I'm also going to link a video where I was suffering from scalp fungus and I talked about that journey. My recipe Bible helped me get over that completely. But that short digression aside, I use my spritzes and my rinses from my recipe Bible to nourish my scalp. Now I drink a lot of tea and tea is rich with antioxidants and other nutrients nutrients. Why can't I apply that same principle to my scalp? It is essentially skin. Not essentially, it is skin. <laughs> it is skin. In the same way you can apply treatments to the skin on your face or your body is the same way you can apply treatments to the skin of your scalp. So what I do is I prepare these nutrient-rich spritzes, rinses, teas, and I prepare this nutrient-rich hair growth oil. And both of those together have really caused my hair to not only grow, but also so thicken, become darker, become more malleable, softer, more agreeable, more manageable, and a myriad of other things. I've been exceedingly happy with my hair since I've incorporated this in particular. And again, I feel like a lot of people don't talk about this, but oils, spritzes, rinses, they're really, really beneficial if you want to encourage faster hair growth, but also solve hair problems like baldness, hair fall, thinning, etc, 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 the list goes on. Hair masks are also among this. Now I'm a huge proponent of hair masks as well. I concentrate most of that product on my scalp of course because the nutrients are supposed to nourish the scalp. Hair is not alive but your scalp that produces the hair is alive. Now yes you need to take care of your hair, yes you need to make sure it's moisturized, healthy, free of splits, free of breakage, but you do need to focus very well on your scalp and scalp health if you want your hair to continue to grow very consistently and very healthily. Number six, cover your hair, period. I mean I cover my hair pretty much all the time. I'm in my house a lot of the time because I'm privileged to work from home. So there's no reason for me to have my hair swinging all over the place. Now that's silly. I cover my hair with my silk bonnet all the time. I also have this like satin hood that I got. Now the times I cover my hair are when I'm asleep, when I'm at home, even when I'm outside, if I do not want people to view or have access to my hair. Now that last one is something I really recommend if you have issues with people coveting your hair or making you feel uncomfortable with the way they ogle you and your hair. This has made me feel very peaceful and calm. Now I do like showing off my hair too, but I do feel that there's a time and a place. And I think that if you want to grow your hair, you should be wise and recognize when that time and place is because it's not everyone who deserves to view your crowning glory. Last but never least, pray. Now I'm sure you've probably never heard this in the video. I mean, maybe someone's talked about it, but I'm super huge on prayer. I owe all of my success in life to the Holy Spirit. So I mean, pray, like seriously, even my hair grows from everything. Every good thing about me is because of God. I'm not perfect, but you know, at least the things that people like about me, I can say with confidence, it's by the grace of God. So affirm, speak positively, speak into your hair, prophesy. You feel me? Think positively because those thoughts have the ability to manifest and become reality. So actually think about your hair being long, beautiful, luscious, healthy, strong, manageable, just everything that you want it to be. Pray and cover your hair with the blood of Jesus because it's not everyone that wishes you well. Talk to your hair and say good things about it. Now I've mentioned this in a video before, there's actually a study that was done and I think this has been done several times where scientists spoke to a plant or spoke to two plants and I think there was maybe like a control plant also and they were saying positive things to one of the plants and negative things to the other plant. Now the difference in growth was staggering. So that just goes to show the powerful effect words have on your existence, on your life, 
on the things that concern you. If you actually want to see a positive difference in your life, speak positively, think positively. No matter what you believe, that is a universal spiritual principle. Even if you don't believe in Jesus, speaking positively will make a world of difference in your life. So with that being said, that's the whole video, y'all. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for connecting with me. Please comment down below. Let me know what you think about what I've suggested to you all. Let me know if you have any other super stellar tips that nobody ever talks about. Please be sure again to share this with your loved ones. Like, of course, because it's super important and helps me out. And last but never ever can be least, again, subscribe to my channel and turn on all your notifications so you know every time I post a new video. I love you all so much. God bless you. And thank you for continuing to ride with me. Don't forget to purchase my recipe Bible. And if you made it this far, I'll give you a discount code, which is going to be right here under my chin. Yeah. <laughs> so check that out for X amount off. Thank you so much. I love you all. Bye.